Hey, hey, friends. This is Martine Williams, and I am obsessed with all things Mompreneur Life and helping you to remix your priorities, your habits, your mindsets, and yes, even your relationships so that you can build a successful business without losing yourself in the process. I'm also obsessed with the killer turquoise and lyrics of the 80s and 90s, but that's beside the point. Girlfriend, you don't have to hustle 24-7, 365, and continue to sacrifice your health, your relationships, and your sanity to be a successful mompreneur. As a small town girl living in a lonely world to a six-figure mompreneur, I am here to teach you how. There is a better way, and this podcast is your one-stop shop for all of the how-tos, the encouragement, the life hacks, the success tips, and of course, a little side of tough love. This is the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast, so let's do this. Y'all, today's episode is with a Turquoise Talk guest that I'm just so honored to have on my podcast. She was actually on my list when I very, very first thought about launching my podcast. And when I received the email that she was requesting to be on the show, like reaching out to me, I was like blown away by that. And I'm still blown away by this, but I actually connected with my guest today on Periscope. Like, do y'all remember Periscope? Do you remember like the 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 noise, the notification that would be going off when someone was going live on Periscope? Like it was just the thing, right? Almost 10 years ago. So that's how long I've known our guest today. And um, I have followed her journey and it's been quite the journey to see her leave her corporate job live on Periscope and to see where she is today. It's just super inspiring. So I'm so excited for y'all to meet or get to hear this conversation. Some of you already know Nicole Walters. Um, If you don't, you're going to fall in love with her today. She is just as real as real gets. She is a former top-selling corporate executive who quit her six-figure sales job to pursue her passion and build a multi-million dollar business, coaching fellow dreamers and entrepreneurs. She is the host of a popular podcast, a TV personality, in-demand motivational speaker, and the author of the forthcoming memoir, Nothing is Missing, a memoir of living boldly. She is passionate about teaching everyday people how to own their power and trust they already have everything they need to succeed. She currently lives in Los Angeles with her three beautiful daughters and trombone playing partner, Alex. Y'all, dream come true episode for me. Super excited for you to get to know her. You are just going to be so blessed by this episode. So without further ado, here is this week's Turquoise Talk guest, Miss Nicole Walters. Well, welcome back, friends, to the Mompreneur Life Remix podcast. I'm your host, Martine Williams, your CEO, your Chief Encouragement Officer. And this is like a really surreal moment. I was, we were just chatting before we started the recording. Like, I had been following Nicole for so long and was definitely on my list when I decided I was going to launch the podcast. And it's just, just so amazing that I'm actually getting the opportunity to do this with you today, Nicole. So today's guest is Nicole Walters. Some of you know her, some of you don't. You need to know her. You need to be following her. I'm so excited about the season of life that you're in and all of the things that we're going to discuss today. So I just thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show and talk to all the listeners that are just going to love this episode. Oh my goodness, Martina, are you kidding me? We are about to have a time. I I literally am over here like, it's a combination. Part of them are going to be like, wow, this is incredible. The rest of them are going to be like, what has happened here? Energy bomb. <laughs> Best chat ever. Oh my goodness. So before you launched the business that you have today, you had a high paying corporate job, right? Like sure did. what was it like to take that, that leap? We're just going to dive right into it. Like, what was it like to take that leap as you describe, promote yourself to work for yourself? Martine. Okay. We have to do backstory. You're acting like we don't know each other. So first and <laughs> foremost, backstory, I love for everyone listening, Martina is doing the perfect interviewer thing of <laughs> let me lead you in. Girl, you were there. It was madness. It was yes. chaos. It was tears. I was terrified because I quit my job live online in front of 10,000 people. And yes. I did it, obviously, after sort of building a place to go, you know, right. which is something yeah. that I, you know, well, this was almost 10 years ago. And yeah. I was around when we first met. So it was almost 10 years ago. And I had started generating revenue. I'd started taking my own consulting clients outside of the formalized consulting corporate job I had. 
And I made enough money that I was like, okay, this seems like it works. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't, I have enough money for, I think the number that was in my head, and I don't know if I've ever shared this before, was six months before I'm like, okay, got to look for another job. Right. So I was like, okay, I've got a little nest egg. I think I have a, a system that's working. Let me quit my job. And of course, let me burn the bridge behind me so I can't <laughs> go back over it. So yeah, it was a big deal. It's crazy, but I'm still here. You know, um, those that have been listening to the podcast, they, they know my story, but I did the exact, not the exact same thing, but I took the biggest leap of faith ever leaving my 16 year career in direct selling. Um, it'll be two years in January, like literally burned the bridge. Like God called me out and I'm like, okay, but where am I going? And yep. you know, I mean, I had, you know, I made a smart, confident decision, but it was still scary, you know? Oh, and I know it was that, scary. Yeah, yeah. And also like, I don't know about you and I don't know how many God girls are listening, but what, no matter what your faith is, if you're a God girl, you'll understand what I'm saying about this. It is only slightly less scary than not being obedient to God, right? Like, so right. I, for me, it was like, this call was so serious and so many things were showing up that I literally had no excuse where, I mean, and, and I think you'll relate to this too. You know how you start doing that like weird bartering thing with God that literally doesn't matter to him at all because he's going to do what he wants to do. And exactly. you're, you're going to barter anyway. So you're like, all right, God. So if I if I can like just get four new clients, then then I'll definitely do the thing that you're telling me to do. Yeah. And if I could just do this, you know. And I was doing all of that when I tell you he was answering, and he was answering in the very parent way, like, of course, sure, here, <laughs> you know. And then it finally was like, okay, girl, if you don't quit, like, you are really you're being that child. You know what I mean? Yes. So I just like yes. But when I tell you, it was with all the fear because yeah. I have a family, and I, you know, I I just. I mean, and we haven't talked about this part of the story yet, but I just adopted three girls, you know, and they were sisters and I made a promise to them that I would be there and support them. And what the right. heck was I doing? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? it, when it doesn't make sense on paper, you know, and that's like, like you said, that wrestling that I did with him was like, this makes no sense. Like yeah. I'm at the top yeah. of my game, like all the things. And he was like, for such a time as this, do you trust me? That's you, right. Just trust me. Like, trust even me. if it goes bad and you can't mess it up, like, right. I know what I'm telling you to do. You yeah. can't mess it up. Even your mess up is part of the plan. So it's <laughs> like, just leave, you know, it'll be yeah. fine. And yeah. I mean, it's, but again, in our very humanly way, like we're mamas, you yeah. know, we've got, yeah. we've got our littles, we feel obligated, we have responsibilities. None of those things are going away. But the thing that I always used to remind myself was, were these two factors. One, you can always go back, girl. You know how you you know how to do this life. It's not like you're ever throwing away your skills, your talents, your relationships. Right. If for anything you do need to go back, you can, right? You're good at what you did. The bridge may be burnt, but you know, you can swim across the river. Like there's a way, right? <laughs> and then they, and then the other thing that I try to remind myself is you've given so many years of yourself mm. to these other careers, to mm. these other people. Yeah. What would it like to give six months to you? Six mm -hmm. months to, to what God's called you to do. What would happen if yeah. you just saw how that worked? And then if it doesn't work, at least that little needling in your head will be quiet. And yeah. then you can go all in, right? Yeah. So yeah. here I am. It's so true, man. It's so it's still probably raw for you too when you just kind of go, oh, yeah. you know, who you were in that season, all the thoughts that you were having, all the fears and excitement. Like I did have peace. It still was very hard, but I still had that peace because I knew, like you said, obedience trumps comfort. And it wasn't a comfortable right. decision to make, but I knew I was borderline being disobedient at that point. And, and he didn't call me into another career right away. He yep. called me into a season of rest. And I'm like, season of stillness. Oh my word. It's so essential. I know that I'm here to, you know, chat a little bit about my new book, nothing is missing my memoir, yes. but I talk about this part of it where the whole point, nothing is missing is just this understanding that we have everything we need to get where we want to go yeah. and um and that we're not lacking right society is constantly telling us we're lacking like right. oh mama you don't puree your own baby food you're <laughs> lacking you know like oh mama you sit in the parking lot at target and cry and eat comfort cheese you're lacking right. like that is what we do you know so it's like one of those things where i was like so tired of hearing that in every facet that i didn't realize how much of my life was based around chasing what mm. was missing, yeah. you know, constantly saying like, okay, is it more money? Is it more followers? Is it, you know, being a better mama, like all these things. And you're so right. Like that awareness of, look, even if I have to stand still for a while, there's nothing missing in standing still because rest is still valuable. Right. And, and that is 
such a shift, I think, from the messaging we hear all the time, especially as moms. Oh, yeah. It's all about the hustle, you know, the hustle. Culture. Busyness, the go, 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 the yeah. validation for yeah. being awesome. Like, no, yeah. my kids will go to school with tags on them because I bought their clothes in transit <laughs> because I forgot that they wore the shirt from yesterday. <laughs> and I didn't want to get called in because it looked like my kid wears the same clothes every day. So right. here we go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We kind of get into this proving energy. I've been talking about this because it's been coming up with a lot of my coaching clients is they're in this proving energy where they have to prove their worth, right? Mm-hmm. Prove first of themselves. And then to, you know, maybe it's their coworkers or their kids or their spouse or their friends or all the other moms in their group. And when you're improving energy, that's what creates the burnout because you just overwork to compensate for that instead of just standing confidently yes. who you are, right? Yes. And like proving energy also is one of those things that honestly, it's not good for you in terms of your mindset because you're really invalidating all the things you've done to get where you are, which right. is not a good message to keep ingraining in yourself. Plus, Odds are the stuff you're doing to prove are like leaps and bounds beyond what's required. And like bless our hearts as like moms and business owners, we all day are like, I'm going to show up. I'm going to work without reproach. No one's going to say anything about the stuff I turned in. Value, value, value. But we forget that like if if a level seven, you know, worth of effort is what's required to do the job, already exceed expectations, make people really proud. Why are you giving a 10 when those extra three points could go to your kids or go to your own wellness or go to your future. You yeah. know, you're doing it just to accommodate, like you said, this proving need that just, it really doesn't serve anything at the end of the day. You can't serve anyone if you're all burnt out. That's right. That's right. You're your greatest asset. And if you're not taking care of yourself, how can you be all the other things to all the other people? It's just right. backwards. We just have it backwards. And mm-hmm. I'm on mission to kind of change that. But I that. so I know there's someone who's listening who <clears throat> may be that person who's thinking about making that leap or taking that leap and transitioning out. And they're having all the feelings and all the thoughts. Like, what are some pieces of advice you have from someone who's listening today that's like, okay, I'm borderline disobedience, or they're just ready to make that change, but they're so afraid to do that. They're not trusting themselves. Sure. So there is that leap of faith. I think one of the things that I always try to tell everyone, because I, I'm sure you get the question from your clients too, which is, when do I know if I'm ready? How do I know if I'm ready? You know, and the truth is, it, and this is the best part for all the mamas out there, because you will relate to this. It's like having babies. Yeah. You're never ready. No. You're always ready. It's both. You yeah. know, it's, yeah. you will only find out because the final stage of readiness is actually doing it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of us think that it is a checklist of preparation, you know, that if I can get all these elements ready around my product and once it's perfect, then it's ready to launch. But the truth is in corporate America, the product launch includes sending it out, getting feedback and then implementing changes. That is the rest of the full cycle of product development. Yeah. And the same thing applies to you and your personal development. The full cycle is get out there, mess things up, get feedback on where you messed up and improve. And now you've actually done the entire process. So honestly, you're sitting in the middle when you think you're at the end or you're looking to the finish line and the finish line is doing. Yeah. Yeah. Someone definitely needed to hear that. We get stuck in this mode of having all the details, right? Having all the plans, everything perfect. I'm like, I, I can't tell you in the very beginning how much I prayed to God to just give me the blueprint. Like I'm a worker. I will do the work. Just give me the blueprint. And he's like, huh, that's funny. Yeah. There is no <laughs> require any faith to, you know, just... right. right. Well, and also like there is no blueprint because he has to pivot, right? Like he knows yeah. what he wants to do, but based on sometimes our needs, like, cause the Bible talks about petitioning, right? Like we can petition and say, God, please change this thing. Cause we want this to happen, you know, and he can be like, oh, that actually isn't too bad. We can do that. You know, like he's able to adjust things, but also he has to pivot to protect us, you know, and sometimes from ourselves, you know? So, I mean, there are pivots that happen. And I talk about that in my book. The last thing that people would realize is they hear, oh, she quit her job. Now she's a multimillionaire. She's repped by CAA. She's had TV shows. She has a top podcast. They hear those things and they're thinking straight line. Mm -hmm. You know, she did. And the question that I get from a lot of people is, well, what did you do? Right. As if it was, well, I did these five things and I got here. Then I did these four things and I got here. And I think we get a lot of that messaging from marketing online. But the truth is, it's not like that. It has been so nonlinear. And on top of that, imagine a nonlinear line with like the world throwing boulders in the middle of it, you know, and that's what my memoir is about. It's about the fact that you know, I, everything's trucking along, feeling like I'm hitting my marks. And then my 17 year old, my middle one is diagnosed with stage four cancer. 
And, you know, for all the moms out there, she's totally fine now. But, you know, for uh, over a year of our life, we were paralyzed. And and any mama can know that, I, you know, I adopted my girls. And, uh, you know, from the first thought that came to mind was, I just got them. There's no way that they're going anywhere, you know? And yeah. I that becomes your big priority mm -hmm. because sometimes God has to slow you down to keep you from hurting yourself. Right. If I kept trucking along, you know, and I think a lot of us have this mindset, well, if I kept going with this thing, how much further would I be? Oh, Look, yeah. whatever it was that slowed you down was required. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. required. And yeah. so, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a weird place to be to kind of feel paralyzed by perfection, but the truth is getting out there and getting to the messy is required. It's part of it. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you, when you laid that out, because in my brain, that's what I was, I was thinking about asking is like, what did you do? What you said is the normal, the, the common yeah. question people ask, because I am that plan girl, like, give me all the plans I already yep. said. The, like, if you tell me to do these five things, I'm going to do these yep. five things. But even yep. in my own journey, I could, I mean, I can testify to to what you're saying. It's not linear. And there, you know, I just had to learn to just put it out there messy and figure out and not take it personal. And this is where a lot of mompreneurs really fall into that not worthiness is they see themselves as a failure as opposed to that just didn't work. Let's just figure out another way that it works. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, there is something to be said. This is the benefit of coaches and programs and structure. Look, yeah. let's not waste time trying to figure out things that are already figured out. You know, right. like yeah. that's why you have to use your resources. That matters. But ultimately, have a loose skeleton. And I'm learning more and more that I thought that I was like, oh, I have a loose skeleton of where I'm going and I'll let the meat and bones fill in. But oh, God humbled me. You know, like after, <laughs> you know, my kids and all that stuff, I was like, oh, I was like, it's got to be even looser than that. You know what I mean? Because things will come up, you know? And I mean, any mama can relate. You will have, a, a you'll wake up and say, this is how the morning will go. And then a kid will literally come downstairs and throw up in the middle of the kitchen. Welcome yeah. to your new morning. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, this is what it looks like, you know? And so this idea that we may feel like in our businesses, we don't know how to pivot or we have to follow this linear structure. Listen, sister, we don't do that. Okay. None of us do that. It's, and we are professionals at adaptability. Yes. So we have to apply that sameness into our business. You know, it applies the same way. And, and that's how it was for me. I mean, I never would have guessed that, you know, my three girls, which, you know, we're glossing over it, but I adopted my three girls in Baltimore City. I met them on the side of the street. Their mother was panhandling and she went to jail after a year or she went to jail in 30 days after I met her. And wow. I took in all three girls. And um, it's weird because this was almost 10 years ago. So the story to me is kind of, you know, this just happened. These are my babies. But, right. you know, becoming a mom in that fashion did light of, you know, some fire under my feet to because I knew that in just five years, I would have two in college, one, you know, in middle school, I would have, or not middle school, but, you know, firmly into mm -hmm. school, because she was uh, the youngest was three at the time, they were three, 11 and 14. And that I needed money, one to do those things. And I needed time and flexibility, because I had an instant three kids. So there's nothing that, you know, this isn't, you know, a test, Lord, you hear me, it's not a test, but there's nothing that can come at me that I can't pivot from. You know, there's nothing like going from mentor to mom in 30 days that says, all right, I do know how to adapt. Right. right? So, yes. Yes. so that means it doesn't have, the plan doesn't have to be perfect because I right. know how to adapt. So let's right. go, you know? Right, right. right. So in your book, you know, it's the title is, is nothing missing. And can you share just a little bit more like, what does nothing missing mean to you overall? Like, and is it, is it in every season? Like, like what's the kind of go into a little bit more detail on that? We touched yeah. on it at the beginning, but yeah, for sure. So there's a phrase that I've been using a lot, you know, in my life, especially in this new season, uh, everything is right. Everything is wrong. Nothing is missing. Mm -hmm. And I say this because when I tell you decisions made from a place of lack, are tremendous. And we hear about it all the time. Like, oh, don't have scarcity mindset around money. Don't feel like you lack financially, you know, scared money, don't make money. We hear about a lot in relation to money, but listen, money is a tool. It is not everything. Most of us would love to be able to have lots of it to do good things. I'm a big believer that money should be with good people because mm -hmm. people who are not good people have no problem getting all the money and doing what right. they want. So money is very good with me and I will use it for good things. However, Lack appear, uh, shows up in so many places outside of money, mm. feeling like you lack in your appearance, you know, feeling like you lack in your parenting, feeling like you lack in friend, female friendships. Mm. You know, whenever we are identifying lack in our life, it's, a, it's an opportunity to target growth, sure, 
but it depends on how we're internalizing it. Yeah. If we're saying like this is missing and thus does not exist, what happens is we don't approach how to get it correctly. Mm. I mean, there's so many things we write off because we think it just won't happen for us. Yeah. And, and we don't even realize we've done it. And that is so dangerous. And that's what nothing is missing is about. I've recognized finally after many, many years that everything is right, meaning I am clearly where I'm supposed to be in this season. I am not like, I mean, there's no way that I'm not because I'm able to pay my bills. My kids are fed, you know, I'm doing meaningful work and I get to do at least one thing every single day that blows my mind. Like I can't believe I have this opportunity, you know? So everything right now is very right. Um, And I can also feel that I am positioned for greatness, that God is specifically like moving me to where I need to stand to receive whatever blessings are are ahead. So everything's right. But Mm -hmm. girl, everything is wrong. When I say everything is wrong, it couldn't be no wrong. Okay. Because this is not what it was supposed to look like. I specifically said, Lord, mansion, Oprah, fruit trees, nice things. Okay. No spanks. I don't want to need spanks, Lord. I felt like I was very clear. Okay. I have a full collection of spanks. Okay. We are not in alignment. (laughs) Okay. So everything is right. Because everything is happening as it should, but everything is wrong because it looks nothing like what I planned. Yeah, everything is wrong, yeah. and then most of all, nothing is missing. Mm-hmm. I do not lack. You know, I have everything I need, even if it doesn't look the way I want. I have some semblance. A yeah. lot of times, you're like, man, I don't have like a big group of girlfriends. You know, I don't have my my squad that I get to go out with every day. Look, do you have one good girlfriend? Do you have a yes. good sister? Do you have a good coworker you can talk to? Mm-hmm. Because if so, you don't lack. You know, you're just in a position where you need some growth or you may want to change, but let's not say that we lack. You have a roof over your head. It may not be the mansion that you will have, but right now you don't lack, you know, and it's just remembering that because uh, again, society will tell us all day the holes, you know, in order to sell to us, but they don't ever point out the good and there's so much of it. Yeah, it is a mindset shift. Like I love what you said about seeing lack as an opportunity for growth. Like if you could just believe that, like really believe that in your soul that, you know, it's like, instead of saying, I'm not good at something, that's an area of opportunity for growth. But if you're not good at it or I'm lacking, then that's what you're starting to see, right? Your brain goes, it becomes hard. Yeah. It's hard to even do different, you know? And it's, um, I mean, right down to the messaging of I'm not a good mom or I'm an Mm -hmm. inadequate mom. Well, that's when we start actually being in a position where, you know, depression sets in. Now we can't get out of bed. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. and. That is so, so dangerous. And I can tell you categorically, it's not true. You know, that feeling of not being a good enough mom is not possible. And I say this as someone who parents children that were not planned for, desired, you know, or, or cared for in the, in the way that they needed to be. They do have a mother that loves them, but mother is not her, her best suit. That's not her best skill set. So I know what it's like to be around a mother who is both not able because of substance abuse, but also not, doesn't have the tools, you know, inherently. If you are a parent who is interested in your children on a base level or on days, that's all you can muster. You are a good mom (laughs) because that is like, I mean, there are parents out there who just literally will not even talk to or see their kid for a year. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and just being interested in what's happening with them yeah. and and feeding them and caring, like that is enough. And if you're listening to this podcast, you're a good mom because you're thinking, how can I be a better person and show up? That by default means you are. Yeah. So if you're if you're getting that messaging, you need to reject it because it does not serve you. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and for any of the moms that are listening, like and you're in a maybe a rough season with your kids, you know, mine is uh just was telling Nicole, I dropped him off. Y'all know this for college. And he actually sent me a message yesterday. And I don't know if it's because he's missing me or he's learning to appreciate now that I'm not there, but it was that exact message. It was like, you're a good mom. The fact that you worry about being a good mom says oh, yes. you're a good mom. And I was like, yes. Oh my God. I'm literally just tears were strolling down my face that he yes. said unprompted, whatever. I'm like, thank you, Lord, for that encouragement. Yes. Well, a lot of days you do feel like you're messing them up. <laughs> everything, yes, all the time. Like, oh my goodness. And I'm telling you, those types of messages, you have to remember too, there's something my therapist said to me, which is, because she's a Christian, she was like, God can take better care of your kids than you can. Yeah. So just keep in mind that you're not doing it by yourself either, right? So that message came to you in that moment because he saw someone else whose parents have not checked in on them, you know, and he knew enough and it processed in his brain, I am blessed, you know, and, and, and he was raised so well that he said, I need to speak this out. 
I can't just, because there are kids who realize they're blessed and just keep it in. They don't text the mama to say, you're the greatest. You know what I mean? Like, and so it's just one of those things where unfortunately with littles, you know, now that I have a 11 year old, 21 year old and 24 year old, you know, I have really learned that the processing does come, especially for the mamas of littles who are listening right now. Bless you. Bless you. Later on, it all circles back. Even my 20, they never leave. They're always children. So the lie of 18 (laughs) being the time they never leave. (laughs) They don't. My 24 year old will come home and lay on me on the couch and cuddle up still. And Mm. I love it. Obviously I'm obsessed. You know, my babies can Mm. literally stay up under me for the rest of my life and I will be the happiest little clam, but yeah. they will call me and say, mom, I can't figure out how to make this broccoli. You know, you are always mom forever and ever. You know, um, my fiance, he still calls his mom and says, what is, what is perm press on the washing machine? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he is a grown man girl <laughs> and I'm standing right there. And he's like, my mom is the person I need to call for this. Answer. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things. Like, it's hilarious. And I look at him and I'm just like, really? Really? And he was like, yeah, I just figured my mom would know, you know, and I'm like, you know, so it's just, it just is, you know, we're we're so valuable to them and they just may not realize it. You know, we don't get the same affirmation like we do at work where we have our year end performance review or, you know, right. uh, But also, oh, and this might be a tip that I don't know if you probably do this because you're a good mom. You probably do this. But I ask my kids how I'm doing. And I and I do this because I'm an adoptive mom. So I was always very cognizant over the fact that we kind of all chose each other versus you were, you know, plopped down in here. We created you from little and you don't know any different. Like, you know, so I care about feedback and maybe that's the corporate in me as well. You know, the consultant. So I asked my littles, I'm like, you know, how am I doing? Is there any area that you think I can improve or is there something you think you want done differently? And they will tell me, you know, so I've had littles because I've fostered a safe space for that feedback. So I've had them at one point, my at the time she was 14, my middle one. And she said, you know, mom, you're really good at everything you do. I appreciate you. But when you come, when I come home from school off the bus, you kind of launch in right away with the list. And <laughs> I just, if you could take up, which every mom, you all know what I'm talking about. The wash your hands, put your stuff down, back, automatically. Like, and we don't even realize it because one, I don't want you to walk in with your grubby little hands and go right into the fridge and grab some grapes and just like, you know what I mean? Like there's right. just yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> wash your hands, put your stuff down, go do this. And then you'll circle back and I'll, and I'll connect with you by the island in the kitchen, like a normal person, you know? So, you know, I will say this to her. And the first thing she said was, yeah, you know, it'd be nice if you just said, Hey, how was your day first? Yeah, yeah. And it didn't even occur to me. I wasn't doing that. And it also didn't register to me how meaningful that was to her. And yeah. when I tell you from the moment she told me that I have always always not just for her, but for all my kids. Now that's where yeah. I start. Yeah. Hey, cutie pie. How was your day? Do you need anything? Yeah. And then once we had that temperature check, then it's like, okay, sounds good. Well, we're going to do regular routine. These are the things. But when you circle back, if you want to tell me anything else, we can chat. Yeah. And it's been helpful. So, I mean. What a valuable question. I mean, just- I, you don't even think, you don't even realize it, you know, yeah, but you ask right. them that. And instead of us sitting here feeling like we're doing a bad job, you know what I mean? Like they can just tell us how we're doing, you know, like they're old enough. My 11 year old tells me, I asked her, how am I doing? She's like, you're actually really, you're doing a really good job, mom. I went to other people's houses and I was surprised by how good of a mom you are. I was like, not surprised. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, yeah. Thanks. I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's just a valuable question to ask yourself, like For ask sure. Lord, ask your spouse. Like it's just a really simple, but such a great, like it shows you care. Like you said, how am I doing? How, yeah, am, I doing? how am I doing? And, and the answer always will be better than you think. Yeah. Significantly better than yeah. you think. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. Hey friend. So you have been trying to make some shifts this year. Maybe you set some resolutions and you're just feeling stuck. You don't feel like you're making progress or you're just not sure what to do. And you've heard me say this before, but being stuck is a mindset, not a position. And this is where a coach comes in to support you because here's what I know to be true about you, friend. If you could have done it alone, you would have already done it period. And as a life coach and a certified PDP professional, I specialize in using a research-based personality and performance survey called the ProScan to illuminate how your unique personality and natural strengths, your work and life environments are influencing real-time performance. So here's what you need to do. Go to the link in the show notes and book your free clarity call to learn more about how I can support you in your goals. I can't wait to illuminate your strengths, cultivate your confidence and elevate your life. 
So I know you talk, describe yourself as a bootleg Christian. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> I we, love, we I love that. some of that. We may have witnessed some of that in this uh, conversation yes, already. Yes, but yes. So I talk fact. about this in my book, right? I talk yeah. about this in my book. <laughs> I am working every day to be a King James Christian, right? Like, I mean, I want to be the one who reads that book and understands it, you know, yeah. all, all that. But I am a message version, new international version girl. I am a a sit and park in the overflow parking lot, late service, sometimes in the balcony, I'll sometimes forget my Bible, got to read the words off the screen, girl. Like right. I am trying, you know what I mean? Like I will be there, but I am not front row. And what I've learned is I have to grant myself grace in that because it still counts. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, and I think that a lot of times, both in entrepreneurship and parenting and in our faith, we feel like we have this bar that we have to meet. And honestly, in the darkest moments, it's really easy to abandon the journey because we feel like the bar is so high. Right, yeah, and yeah. what I've had to learn, particularly in relation to my faith, and I'm going to just say it in this industry where so many people are worried about material things, or will I get the Lamborghini or will I look a certain way? It yeah. is easy to get lost in the sauce, girl. I mm-hmm. live in Los Angeles, you know, and God is everywhere. Trust, I believe he is very moving within Los Angeles as well. But you know, it's easy to get lost in the sauce, to get focused on things that don't matter and get caught up in worlds that don't serve you. And it has really shown itself to be true for me to focus on the fact that, Nicole, you are not going to be perfect about this. You are going to be kind of like the bootlegs, lucky charm version, like Walmart brand, you know, of Christianity. But guess what? It still tastes good. And for people who don't know Christianity, that is Lucky Charms. You know what I mean? They are like, wow, like we aren't familiar with the faith and you are a positive representation of of what we need to know. Your life may be the only Bible that some people read, you know? So it is such a privilege to be able to be vocal about that wherever Mm -hmm. I go. And, um, And I do the best I can to try to honor that. But also, again, building grace. I'm a hot mess. I sometimes I say curse words. I definitely drink a glass of wine. I went through a divorce. Of course I drink wine. You know what I mean? Like these are like normal things about life, you know? And also I went through a divorce, you know what I mean? Because that was another thing that God called me out of, you know? And I think that sometimes people, we get so caught up in the church hurt, if you will, Mm -hmm. that hurt of, that is very much man and not God, you know? And we start feeling like that's what our lives are supposed to be. But no, no, no. I want, I am not just a God girl, but I'm a follower of Jesus. And that is what I care about. That is my relationship with him is all that matters. And me and my, my, my guy, we are good, you know? And so that's what, and I keep working every day to make sure he gets the glory. And so, you know, it's not, it's not easy, right? Because you want to be popular. You want to be cool. You want to do what's hip, you know, but you know, you just have to remember that at the end of the day, when I have to meet my maker, what type of life and legacy do I want to say I lived? And, um, and so far so good. It's still a mess, you know, but it's a functional mess. It's a mess. But look at all of your messes that have become his messages, though, when you think about it. I received that. Yes, it's so true. And I think that, you know, it's hard when you're in the the middle of your own mess. And like church hurt, I think, is just people hurt. Like, because the church is full of hurt. That's that's what I'm saying. (laughs) Absolutely. Yes. You know, yes. we, we, we think they're not going to disappoint us and they are. It doesn't matter where they're in the pulpit or where they are in the church. That's like, right. And humans make mistakes and human yep. relationships are messy. But yep. it's the fact that you've been able to turn those messages in, into a message um, through your book and just through the work that you do that you're able to impact other people. And so it's hard. I've never been through some of the things you've been through, but I've been through hard things too. And I know that he's yep. going to use them. And that's that mindset. Of, I'm not in lack. Nothing's missing. He's going to use this. I, I say nothing's Absolutely. wasted. He's not going to waste anything. He's going to use, yes. it, use Every it tear is counted. And But what's crazy about that also is we're saying all of this and it's that motivational pick me up. And just so that everyone knows we're not feeding that toxic positivity, like everything's going to work out fine. Yeah, no. It stinks. Yeah. I don't even know. Like it, that is why I call it comfort cheese. <laughs> I am known to sit with a bag of Tillamook medium cheddar snack size in my car yeah. cry and eat my cheese please know first I will cry and eat my cheese right. then I will go and do the thing I need to do you know so yeah. I'm very aware that when my daughter was diagnosed with cancer I was grateful that because of my faith I did not say to myself where is God I think there's a lot of times people default to that and I understand why they do yeah. Yeah. but the way my faith was set up at least in that season that was not where I went I was like oh God is everywhere because we are close to the facility. We have great doctors. We have the money 
to pay for whatever we need. We are, you know, I have the flexibility that I don't have to quit a job. Like I was like, God already moved so many pieces to assure she would be healed. So right. that was how I chose to see it. But make no mistake, when the diagnosis hit, I was like, no, yeah. this is, how are you going to use this for good? How is that? There is no good that comes of pediatric cancer. It shouldn't even exist. This right. Yeah. But right. I also said, I then was able to get myself to, yes, nothing is wasted. So let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So as entrepreneurs, especially as mompreneurs, we are trying to juggle all the things, you know, motherhood, entrepreneurship. And one of the things I talk about in this podcast a lot is burnout. And I would love to know just from you, have you experienced it? I'm sure you have. What did it like? How did it represent? How did it show up for you? Because every, some everybody's different. Some people, they have like that physical exhaustion. Some people, it's just they have lack of inspiration. They lose their creativity. How did it show up for you? And then how did you kind of work your way out for someone who's there right now and listening? Yeah, so I can totally understand that. Yeah, so uh, burnout, first, it was a mindset shift. I The first time I got burnout, out, I didn't even realize that I had it. I was like, I just don't feel like the, the number one sign for me for burnout is when I want to burn it all down. That's how I think of burnout. Yeah. When I'm like, I don't want to do it anymore. But again, nothing's missing. Nothing is broken. I'm just not interested. You know, um, it's mm-hmm. usually just, it starts with sheer fatigue, right? Mm-hmm. Because you're too tired to even make decisions. It's decision fatigue. Yeah. And so I, I think a lot of us think that burnout is, oh, I'm just so sleepy, I can't get out of bed, my body's aching. And that it can be a manifestation of it, but it can also be decision fatigue. I don't want to take any more calls. I don't want to, you built this thing that you love, this company you love, but suddenly you're like, just close the whole thing down. If yeah. one more thing happens, I'm done. Yeah. But you know you're going to deal with problems in your business. The fact that you don't feel like showing up to them usually indicates that something is out of balance. And that's how it was for me. And even worse, I thought burnout was part of entrepreneurship, you know, and because back 10 years ago, people weren't talking about it the same way. And yeah. for me, it was, oh, okay, well, the point is that you work to burnout, then you recover, then you work to burnout, then you recover, yeah. then you work to burnout, then you recover. That's literally what I thought it was to go hard is work like kind of like the gym or the right. Olympics, yeah. Yeah. Like max fatigue and go. Yeah. Yeah. And what happened was about three years ago, I uh, started experiencing because also, you know, your girl is aging, believe it or not, I don't (laughs) receive it. You know what I mean? My (laughs) earthly age is, you know, in that 40s region, my heavenly age is 25. And I want what God wants for me. Okay. (laughs) So, (laughs) so, but that said, I'm going to go with that. Yeah, right, right. But that said, you know, uh, I could respond very differently to burnout in my 20s than I did when I was in my 40s, you know? So, what happened was, that cycle literally couldn't work because my body changed. And what happened three years ago was I ended up with facial paralysis, a blood pressure of 173 over 153. In Whoa. In I worked in cardiac career for seven years. So that's, that's, you understand. That, what the, yes. and, oh, and understand that at that point I was 36. So, Ooh. so my doctors were like, Hey, we're, this isn't meds. This isn't, this is you. Like yeah, you are yeah. killing yourself. That's all yeah. it is, you know? And um, and when I tell you that was at its peak, but it was hovering and staying in that range. Mm. So my heart was way overworking. I had psoriasis, which was, I'd never had, had any skin conditions before. So here I am getting these flare-ups of dry skin patches everywhere. I mean, it was literally, my body was actually breaking down. Yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, and a lot of people talk about, oh, well, you know, you can burn out till you die. Before you die, you start seeing all these other symptoms. My hair was thinning, you know, um, I weight gain, you know, like just all these different things. And I finally said to myself, oh, crud, I can't, if the next cycle of burnout that I do could kill me, mm. you know, so this can't be the way right. I have to change it. And um, that was where I started making some major shifts in my life. I moved to California. I, I gained, I gained one husband you know, he's my husband now, you know, um, and I made shifts to my business, you know, I downsized my staff, I shifted responsibilities to a COO, I really learned a lot about delegation and trust, both of God and of my systems. Mm -hmm. And, um, and all of that helped a lot. And then also parenting wise, and this is for every mama out there, I stopped being an answer all the time. I, I said, I started turning things over to my kids saying, what would you do here? Mm. And even if their answer wasn't as good as what I would say, I'd say, oh, that could work. And I'll let them go do it. Yeah. You know, I'll yeah. let them go do it. I started letting my kids become increasingly more independent. My 11 year old does her own laundry. She gets herself up in the morning. She gets herself dressed. She packs her own lunch. 
She does all the dishes. You know, she has a schedule and a routine she follows every single day. And that allows me to have, the way I position it with her is we're a team in our household. So if you're able to do those things, it allows me to do things like plan for Disneyland and get ready for Christmas and do trips. So, you know, I am happy to do your laundry for you, but understand that if I do that time, then it takes away from something else. So if you do those things and I do these other things then we can meet in the middle, both finish with our tasks and do something fun. Right. And it and realizing that I have to be super mom has changed everything. You know, it has really yeah. changed everything. Yeah. So the super mom yeah. is just super real mom is what happens. Yeah. Right. yeah. It's just not it's not real life. Literally no one can operate like that. It's not even a real thing. Like, what are yeah. you talking about? Yeah, yeah. And what I heard you say that I want to make sure everybody heard is you you got help in one way mm-hmm. or another. You know, you For either sure. gave that responsibility to the child who has the actual agency to do those things, has the ability to do those things and just took it off of you. And I think for entrepreneurs, that's a hard thing to maybe accept, right? Like I need help, whether it's for the business or for home life so that you can, you know, do the things that you need to do for your business and be the mom and the wife and all the things that you can be both in. It's not either or, but you do have to have help. So what was your first hire for someone who's listening? And they're like, okay, yeah, my first hire that I recommend to everyone, you know, and I say this as a business consultant of over a decade, is a, a, a personal admin. Now, a personal admin can actually roll over into your business as well. It's not quite an assistant. And and this, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, people mess stuff up and then I got to fix it. And what if they're not capable? Because that's what people's resistance to getting an assistant <laughs> or admin is every time. But what I did and what I recommend for your first admin is have them sort for the money. What does that mean? Sort for the money. Mm -hmm. Have the minder in box and put things into folders. And that is it. You know, having someone do that a couple of hours every single week will allow you to at least prioritize and not miss opportunities that could feed your business. I can't tell you before I had an admin, it got to the point where I was missing interview opportunities, pitches, people who wanted to work with me. I mean, those things are there, you know, and just having someone sort for prioritization and let that be their full time job means that the little time you do have you can spend targeting those things first that are that will have the highest fruit you know for you in your business be the most fruitful and then go to the next item so you know and of course there's also hiring someone to free you up to do your business so yeah i always tell people for ten dollars an hour if you were to pay someone fifty dollars in a week and it's not lost on me what fifty dollars is that is not even a tank of gas anymore it's barely groceries but you know so i understand what the economy is but you know for fifty dollars a week that's five extra hours if you had someone for an hour a day or for five hours on a Friday, which is a half day, and they could prep the food, they could start the load of laundry, they could tidy up the house, they could run to the grocery store, they could do all of these things. What would that look like in terms of your time? Even if you use those five hours to sleep, girl, you right. know, realistic. Yes. I'm so glad you said that. Yes. You know, even yeah. if you use that time to sleep, what, how much would that transform your life? That $50, the rule that I always tell people to justify it is they're like, yeah, but you know, I'm not making enough money. The rule of business is three X ROI. Mm-hmm. If you're earning three times your return on investment, it is worth it. Right. So if you think that for that $50, those five hours, you can't make $150, then it doesn't math up. But if you think you can do $150 worth of work in those five hours you would get from right. paying someone else $50, then yeah. it is more than worth the expense. Like you should do it. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's it's a, it's a simple math equation. My first hire was an admin and she obviously paid for herself tenfold. Right, right. It's just taking that first leap, like, yep. like anything yep. else, just taking that first step and trusting that someone will actually do it. And done is better than perfect. They're not going to do it. And just you can like, always let them go. That's, that's the worst right. I think. We act like we're keeping them forever, you know, and it's like, no, if people aren't earning their return on investment, you let them go. You move on with your life. It'll be fine. Yeah. So shifting gears just a little bit. I know that um, this is something that I hear in my clients and honestly, I vulnerable moment. I struggle with this too. Like, like all the, the picture of success, right? Like if someone was looking at me on the outside, they see the success, right? And some days I see it and some days I don't. I think we all have been through this. So this, I'm not a unicorn. I know that, but like, how do you how do you still feel like you're enough when you're struggling with that? If that makes sense, you know, sure. like no, I totally paper. Where it's like, yeah. well, it's that thing when you're a driven person, right? Because yeah. you know where you're supposed to be, and you also know where you are right now, and you're like, this does not make sense, right? <laughs> like, I know what I'm capable of, like, right. and so it's that balance of, you know, work hard, 
right? Because you want to get where you want to go, but also stay sane, you know, and don't burn right. out, but also know that like you want to get to your goal. So one of the things that I've learned is seasonality. And I talk about it in my book, just like you talked about that season of stillness you took after you quit your job before launching into the next thing. I've learned that there really are seasons and having sort of the hardest part is the patience, you know, in those seasons yeah. to recognize that it can happen whenever I'm in my, my lowest, darkest moments of girl, you never gonna get there. You know what I mean? Like this is taking forever. I try to remind myself that God can do things suddenly. Yeah. I do not know how people do this work without faith. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I just don't, it's yeah. like, a, it's a gap filler for me that I literally don't, I don't know how to do it, but God can do things suddenly, literally tomorrow. If my phone, so this is the funny thing that I always try to remind, like, especially in this, in this space. And I've had this experience and it applies to you too. Before I reached out to say, hey, could I please be on your podcast? And y'all listening, I begged Martine to put me on. She was so graciously to have me here. <laughs> so before I reached out to say, could I please be on your podcast? We were having conversations about you. So your name was being spoken in rooms, probably simultaneously at the same time when you're like, why should I even do this podcast? Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm, tired. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm not where I want to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. Our names are being spoken about in rooms that we are not in. Yeah. So before someone finds out that they made Oprah's book club, Oprah is sitting somewhere talking about her book and there, and it will eventually make its way to you. Right. So it's understanding and believing and knowing that if you're doing the people can't find you, if you're not out there talking about yourself, if you're not right. Doing, right. right? Yeah. So the odds are very good. You're being spoken about in spaces right now and it just hasn't reached you yet. So you just have to keep doing the work because every good thing that has found you, look, your husband was, was born before he met you. You know what I mean? You just didn't know him. He was out there running amok, you know, before, before he showed up at your door to run amok in your house, you know? So <laughs> the truth is we just have to recognize that our life at every single turn has proven to be true, that good things find us as long as we are prepared when they arrive. Yeah. And that's the thing I have to keep reminding myself is that literally it can, it is one, and everyone who's made it can tell you it is one phone call. It is one viral video. It is one text message, you know, but that thing is the culmination of like 15 years to right. get to that point. Yeah. I was going live on social media. Most people who met me around Periscope time don't know that I was on social media for seven years prior to that. So people wow. meet me at my viral moments and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, that's when I started following you, but that's not when I started existing, you know? <laughs> so, so that moment was seven years in the making, you know? And yeah. after that, within Three, three months after that moment, I started discussions for a TV show that eventually became She's the Boss on USA Network. And it's crazy because everyone's like, wow, that happened so fast for you. No, it yeah. took about seven years and three months, you know? And so it, it's okay to balance out that feeling because it's going to happen, but we really have to attack it back with the understanding that things are on their way to me that I literally have not seen yet. And even if they aren't, God could decide today that he wants it to be different. Yeah. And it will be, you know, he will remove you from being a shepherd in the field and put you in the king's palace because that's what he wants. Yeah. And, and, and you don't even have to be ready. You don't even have to have experience. You know, fortunately, I don't, he doesn't set us up like that, but you know, right. it can yeah. happen. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I look at myself all the time and I'm just kind of like, you know, I, the hardest part for me is age, just being, you know, transparent truth moment, right. you know, like Beyonce is 42, you know, and like, you know, Oprah obviously is in her sixties and, you know, I, I just look at it and I'm like, gosh, like how much time, you know, is this going to take? Because, you know, these are people who've hit major milestones and they're within two or three years of me. I feel, you know, quote unquote behind. And I know that word is going to trigger, trigger, trigger. I wouldn't, because we all feel it. I feel behind the curve, but we forget that we get to learn that Oprah didn't have an Oprah. Right. And so the fact that I get to benefit from that storyline yeah. yeah. allows me to be able to say, oh, okay, my time is actually shortened. You yeah. know, like, yeah. like Beyonce had to get famous without the internet right. at all, you know? So what does that mean about my ability to reach audiences with my talent when she literally had to schlep place to place with a microphone right. to audition and get into rooms, you know? So yeah. these are things that I just keep trying to remind myself that, yeah. you know, even though it feels like I'm behind, I also have an accelerated season that mm. other people did not get. Yeah. So, yeah. When do we get there, Martine? Listen. We were just, we started off talking about this in the beginning saying like, girl, 10 years ago, where were we? You right? were in the crowd and I was sweating on stage, <laughs> nervous. Like my, it was my first speaking gig ever. You know what really? I mean? And look at us now. Oh yeah. Mark, that was my first time. MIA was my first time ever speaking in the world ever. You would have never known it. You would have never oh, known it. 
I talk about it in the book, Martine. I'm not kidding. I went upstairs and had a full on panic attack. They had to call a therapist in my room. I was freaking out. You would never have guessed it. I, yeah. when I, I stayed up all night the night before Shalene, um, which everyone's not familiar with Shalene Johnson, but Shalene Johnson, my mentor at the time, she met me off backstage with a margarita. That's how much, that's how <laughs> shaky I was. Like I was, she was like, girl, you need to take the edge off. That is how bad it is. You know? I was sweating bullets. I was Googling it if you could see pit stains through blazers. Okay. It was a mess, a mess. And it's interesting that you say that because one of the things that was echoing through my head was everyone in this audience can see how much of a mess I am. They're no. all certain I'm not going to have a career. No. And the fact that I'm doing this right now so badly is the realization of the fact that this is not my, my future. And that was 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. It's wild mm-hmm. how hard we are on ourselves, you know, so hard. It's like the hardest, you know, and one of the things that came up while you were talking was just the verse, don't go weary and doing good. You know, your harvest mm-hmm. is coming. And, um, I, I feel that, you know, and I know there's, yes. seasons, and there's seasons where you're like, when is this like, come on now? Well, let's, let's speed this up. Yeah. Like already. And you can pray. So can I just say, oh, I'm, I haven't, I have not talked about this with anyone and it should be in my book, but it's more of a now thing. My book is kind of done at the time, but a prayer that I've been doing recently, fortunately, I haven't had to do it in a while. And I'm really thankful, actually. Like, I need to pray and give specific thanks for that because, you know, sometimes you forget that God's removed something from you because you've lived so good for so long and you forget the hard times. I need to go back and say thank you because those hard times are really hard. But there was a window in my life where the like divorce just, it was totally unexpected. I was just devastated. And yeah. um, going through it, I mean, I was like under the table crying, like in a, yeah. a mess. And there were some days that were just so dark that I literally said, God, this is too much. Mm. Like, I know that this is all intentional. I know that you've got a plan. I know mm. that you can solve it, alleviate it, fix it, what have you. But I started praying and my prayer was simply that, like, I know that you don't give me more than I can handle, but this feels like a little bit too much for me. Mm. And if possible, can you please just take a little bit? Yeah. Like, and I don't know what else to ask for. I don't, I didn't even know how to pray for the thing that would be the solution to my suffering. Like, you know how you can say, Lord, cover this bill or Lord, you know, send this, let this sickness go away. Like, I was like, it just feels like I literally just can't carry this. It's it's too heavy of a lift. Please help. You know? And when I tell you in all sincerity, every time it was better, every time there was an alleviation, I have never said that prayer and not actively felt within a, a couple hours to mm-hmm. three days, mm-hmm. a, a change in something that pro- provided ease. Yeah. And whether that change was by recognizing that I needed to turn it over to God, that I needed to um, surrender, surrender, you know, maybe there was something I would see, you yeah. know, that allowed me to kind of keep going or, you know, at times I know for a fact, at times he would literally usher in something that would change, you know, the entire tone of the, of the yeah. time, but yeah. that has really helped. And it's a simple prayer. It's an effective prayer. And as an entrepreneur, there are so many days where it's like, I don't even know what to ask for. Lord, just step in here and please. Just right. Leave. Yeah. 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 And he hears them all. I think oh, we, yeah. especially as Christians, you know, we get wrapped up in, well, they pray so eloquently. Good. All these things. Yeah. But I'm like, not me. I'm like you no. said, I'm just going to like lay it out there. Sometimes I am like, I don't even know what to say, Lord. Like I mm-hmm. literally don't even know what to say, you know? So just do your thing. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm really, I'm praying with cheese in my mouth and tears on my face. Like, Lord, why? You know what I mean? Why is it like this? You know, and that's a whole prayer. Why is right. it like this? Yes, yes. Why am I like this, Lord? Why am I like this? You know, <laughs> like that is the prayer, you know? Yeah. So with this book um, releasing, what do you, I mean, what do you hope readers learn about you, learn about your story, learn about themselves? Like we know we write these stories, not just for ourselves. I mean, it is our healing process. I'm sure in writing a book, that's one of the things I want to do, but I know there's more to it for you as well. So when someone picks up the book and reads it, like what are, what are your, what are your hopes for the person that's reading? Yeah. So, I mean, if there was any hope, it's that recognizing the people you watch online, you know, a lot of what you're seeing is black and white and the book I hope reveals everything in full color. I want them to see that you know, life is not just the wins. You know, uh, my good friend, Jen always talks about the highlight real and the highlight real. So yeah. real being R E E L versus R E A L, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, I just want people to see the real behind this. And also the number one thing people have said when they've read my book, um, is that it's unput downable because the stories are just beyond what you would expect. But the other thing that people say is that it gives them such comfort because it's 
a normal person doing extraordinary things and they're recognizing how relatable it is. And it's empowering because it says, look, like here is someone who literally will be on stage doing like the gig of my dreams, you know, speaking at the craziest event. You know, I went on tour with Dave Ramsey, you know, for eight months, like, you know, doing these crazy things right. and then go home and her kid throws up spaghetti on her, you know, <laughs> and, and, and there's no one, no one's coming to save her. You know what I mean? Like she's got to figure out her own stuff. It's your, it's your thing to deal with, you know? Yeah. And that reality, you know, is what people need more of now in the age of the influencer in all yes. white eating pancakes on their bed and <laughs> feeling like if we can't do TikTok dances, we're not going to make it, you know, like in my days, we dance with our legs, not just our arms. Okay. These <laughs> kids are out here arm dancing, you know, for 15 seconds and making a million dollars, you know, like I, it's crazy. It's crazy. You know, and it's a beautiful thing that it's possible. Like I'm grateful right, that we yes. have a world where that yes. exists the concept, but you know, again, I learned to dance with my legs, you know? <laughs> so it's just one of those things where in this book, I think between, you know, the laughter and some of the teary moments, yeah. the lesson people really are going to take away is that it really is possible mm. as messy and as confused and as figuring it out in this as we are mm -hmm. to get where we want to go and fulfill our lives and build meaningful lives mm -hmm. um, as long as we just keep showing up, you know, and, and showing up as we are. And that is more than enough because nothing is missing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love it. And just to kind of wrap up, what are you most excited about right now? Obviously the book, Ooh. but anything else about the book? Like, do you have um, big dreams for outside of the book or within yeah. using the book? Like well, what are you just most excited about? Well, can, I'm, I'm obviously, yeah, I'm very excited about the book for sure. Mostly because I have three daughters, you know, and they're all old enough to start reading this book and it's dedicated to them. And I've been a mom for 10 years and my girls are all entering those seasons of life where they're really interacting with the world at 11, yeah. 21 and 24. And their decisions are bearing fruit for them. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited to see sort of what this truth about their mom means, you know, like, so my 11 year old just started this. No one knows this. This is what I'm talking about this for the first time. Um, my 11 year old started reading the book for the first time last night. She's on, she's a quick reader. She's on page 60. And she told me, and I got to tell you, I'm cringing. I'm not even going to lie to you because it's my memoir. Right. And right. I wrote, and you know, it's, we have a very transparent household, you know, and there's nothing in it that, cause she's in it, but there's nothing in it that she doesn't need to know, right. you know, but she's going to, she's going to have questions now, right. you know, yeah. and she turns, she turns 12 this year or this month, but she's going to have questions mm -hmm. and I need to be prepared to have these conversations yeah. with her. And she asked me yesterday a tough question. And I talk about this in the book and it goes into detail, but she was like, mom, you were pregnant before. And, uh, you know, and a lot of people have dealt with pregnancy loss and a lot of people have dealt with, you know, miscarriages and, you know, abortion, even, you know, people yeah. have dealt with lots of different choices in, in their life. And, you know, my, my daughter asked me about this and mm -hmm. you realize, and I think we all can relate to this, finding out things about your parents and being like, not, you were a human before, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like you were only ever my mom. It's like seeing your teacher in the grocery store, like Mrs. Jenkins, why are you here? You know, like you eat food, like, you know, like it's just this weird disconnect, you know? Yeah. And I could see that in her face. And, you know, I, 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 so we had a conversation about it, you know, where I was like, you know, mom wanted to have a baby, you know, and, you know, but God has it designed where you were my baby. You were, you were meant to be my baby, you know, in this season. And, uh, and she understood because kids are just amazing, you know, but it's that it's this awareness that I'm going to hopefully deepen the relationship I have with my girls and yeah. empower them to, you know, build great relationships of their own and with themselves. So yeah, yeah. I'm excited about it. Well, I'm so, yeah, I'm so excited for you. And like I said, just, it's just been so just honored to have this time to spend with you and ask you these questions. And we had so much fun and I know people are going to want to connect with you. Where's yes. the best place for them to connect with you? all around the internet at Nicole Walters. And then you can get the book at nothing is missing book.com. Okay. Okay. And we'll put the links to everything in the show notes. So you don't have to write all that down, but I know they're going to be going there like immediately. They're immediately oh, going to bring this book oh. into their home. And I know it's just going to bless so many people and the work that you do with others. So just also, as we wrap up, like what, 
what kind of clients do you work with? Like who, who are your yeah, people? Yeah. Yeah. So my people right now tend to be, um, fairly established entrepreneurs. If they want to work with me one-to-one, I have an office in Beverly Hills. People come out and they spend a day or two with me and we build big, we do introductions. I'm top to bottom. I'm a classic corporate consultant. So I love to work with people there, but I also have courses. So if they head over to NicoleWalters.com, they can find all my options and, and you know, I'd be happy to work with people who need it. Awesome. Awesome. And you also have a podcast. I do the Nicole Walters podcast and it's more of this stuff. It's like stories about the kids and how I got them and (laughs) you know what I'm dealing with that day and you know, all that good stuff. So thank you. (laughs) It ain't cheese in the car crying because that is a collective as moms. That's what we do. It's a sport. Cheese consumption. (laughs) (laughs) That's so true. Such a good comfort food. Well, thank you again so much for coming on um, today. I'm so excited for everyone to hear this and to get to know you more if they don't know you already. I just appreciate your time today. Oh, thanks for having me. All right, friends, I'll catch you on the next episode. Y'all know I'm believing in you always. Well, that's a wrap, friends, for this week's episode of the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and for following the show. It means so much to me. And listen, friend, sharing is caring. So if you love this episode and thought of some fellow mompreneurs who could benefit, send them the link share this episode or take a screenshot and head on over to Instagram and share and tag me at martine31williams. We are connected on Instagram, right? It's where you will get all the fun behind the scenes of my life and business as a mompreneur. Until next time, know that I am believing in you always. Always.